Welcome to video 6 of the query series. This is a continuation series. It means you need to follow it step by step unless you are conversant with other um, other principles of the query. You are able to create a query, you are able to join a query, then you can proceed from here. And in today's video, we are going to use the query as a data source. So one of the queries that we created is the item query inner join that leverage, uh, it leverages the inner join. So it means the child data item will be, will, uh, will be displayed. So the parent will only display it if it has a corresponding child data item. So if there is no corresponding child data item, then we are not going to specify that, we are not going to display that um, parent data item. So it means there should be relations between the parent and the child. And we created that query in the previous video. You can be able to watch if you haven't. And this is a report we have created with a snippet T report. And in the report, we basically have removed the request page to make it easy for us to just access it the way it is. And uh, these are the basic settings. And we can clearly see that here we have a data item. And in this data item, we can only specify the table. We can't specify the query. I don't know if we would have an upgrade that will enable us to specify a query. Not yet, but we are only able to specify a this is query navigation, but it's a table. We can only be able to specify a table. So what, what's the option here? Because we, we want to get the speed of the query. We want to leverage the speed of the query because we can be able to combine data items and send one request to SQL Server, which will leverage the inbuilt index capabilities, the sum index field technology to make our request be faster. So it means if we were... Uh, we are having especially reports that span through several tables. We need flow fields and all that. Then it's easier for us when we are using a, uh, the query as the data source rather than using the, the table directly as the, as the data source and combining so many other child data items. So it will be faster, especially for many records. <laughs> So how can we do it? We can be able to leverage the built-in integer table, the system table that will be able to loop. It's really used in Business Central to loop, so it will help us to loop through the report. And once you're able to loop, we need to define a variable for our query. And um, it will be a query for, come on. So it's the item query, the inner join version of the query out of the other many queries that we created, this is the one that we are using. Then here, when we have the query in our pre-data item, the one that runs before a data item is processed, we can be able to run the open. So we can open our query and uh, we generate a data set that can be read. Then once we open our query, the, the only thing that we need to do is to read so that we can loop through all, um, to, we can go to the next. <laughs> the read is like the query.next. So on after get record, we'll basically be able to do the read. I don't know why this copy operation is not working the way I want it, but dot read. So we can say if query dot read then, but this is a very risky, remember the integer will loop all the integers and the way the report is at the moment, it won't filter out any integer so it can loop from negative and to positive uh what is the limit of the integers but it will loop all through all the integers and this is not what we want so the query so it depends so what do we want to achieve of the query do we want to display everything or we only want to display uh the top 
a hundred or top top five or top six. So we we can even be able to set range. So there are two options of setting range. We can say that uh, we can say that uh, the integer. The problem of having this. So the integer dot set filter. I think I should just call it int number. Let me use that to make it easier for me. All right. Where is that code coming from? Number dot set filter. You can say zero or set range from one to maybe 10. So we can have that to just be able to specify that we want our number to be filtered with the primary key, which is number, to display the values between one and 10. We have filtered our data set. We can even have this number as a, um, we can have the number of rows integer and we have it in the request page of the report and uh, then have the number of rows as a filter in our number despite copying i don't know what's happening to my my clipboard but this is what you can be able to to have so the the number dot set filter number of rows then from this beginning to the end so this is what we can be able to have. But what do we want as of today? So once we open our query, which we can be able to filter also, we can say maybe item query dot top number of rows, then we can say maybe we, we only want the top 10. And um, then we can be able to have another property, maybe a filter and anything that we'd like to to refilter before specifying. I don't know what's happening to my clipboard. It's not accepting any other thing. So we can do anything that we need here. All right, so since we want to display everything in our query, then once we read, then we can have a, a filter or a, a condition that if not query.read, then we exit the report. So this means it will ensure that we read everything in the query. So the number, everything in the query will be displayed. Unless there's no value, then we will break. So now it's time to display the columns for our query. So maybe, um, so what did we have? We need to have the, the number, the document number. This is the item number. So here we need to specify the item number, the description, the document number, and all that. T column. So auto completion at times is tedious. Dot description. Tab tab. Item description or the item ledger description. So all the all the columns now we can be able to display them here and they'll be available with the name. For, for display. So just a recap, we are using a query as a data source for the report and the, since the query cannot be used as a data item, we use the integer as the loop table to be able to make us loop through their query. Then we use the, uh, the query functions to manipulate the queries, that is the open and the read, so that the read will be looping on each on after get record, it will be getting us the next value of the query, which will basically be able to be called via the 
variable query dot using the, the dot notation. And all, after all the values have been fetched, then we break out of this particular report. I'm not able to showcase the full report and the design and editing and all that, but this is how we are able to use queries as the data source for uh, reports. Just to make it brief, I don't want to do show every other thing because we have it still in the report series. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.